In this video, I'm gonna break down the three specific things that you must do to drop the ball correctly. And there may just be an aspect or two that you didn't know about. All right, so in order to demonstrate this, we need a relief area. I've got one right here. It's just a one club length relief area. You can see uh, the whole direction going that way. Now, when the rules talk about dropping a ball, they talk about dropping it in the right way. So for me to drop it in the right way, three things must happen. Number one, I, the player, must drop the ball. Not even my caddy, if I had one, would be allowed to drop it for me. Although it is worth mentioning that if I'm playing in a team competition where I have a partner, my partner would be allowed to drop it for me. Number two, the ball must be dropped straight down from knee height without touching myself or my equipment. And there's a couple of things to unpack there, so let's stick with this requirement for just a second. So dropping straight down means simply that the ball falls straight down to the ground. I'm not allowed to throw it, roll it, spin it, or use any other motion that might affect where the ball comes to rest. It must be dropped straight down. Knee height means the height of my knee when I'm in a standing position, but I don't have to be standing when I drop the ball. My body can actually be in any orientation. I just have to drop the ball from where the height of my knee would be if I were in a standing position. Jack, I want you to draw me like one of your French girls. And dropping it without touching myself or my equipment is pretty straightforward. And it means that when I drop the ball, it must not touch any part of my body or any of my equipment before it makes initial contact with the relief area. However, if the ball makes initial contact with the relief area and then accidentally bounces into a part of my body or part of my equipment, that is a correct drop. There is no penalty and you play that ball as it lies. And the third and final requirement is that the ball must be dropped in the relief area, which means that the ball must make initial contact with the relief area. I would not be able to drop it outside of the relief area and have it bounce in or roll into the relief area. It must make initial contact in the relief area. Now the big important question here is what happens if you breach one or more of these requirements and drop the ball in a wrong way? Fortunately, there is no penalty for dropping it in the wrong way. In fact, if you do drop it in the wrong way, the rules require you to drop it again in the right way. And there is no limit to the number of times that you can drop it in a wrong way before you drop it in a right way. The penalties for dropping it in the wrong way actually occur if you make a stroke at the ball after dropping it in the wrong way. So if I dropped the ball in the wrong way but played the ball from the relief area, it's only a one stroke penalty. But if I drop it in the wrong way and play the ball from outside the relief area, it's a two-stroke penalty. And that's how you drop a ball in the right way. Now to learn what to do if the ball comes to rest outside of the relief area after dropping it in the right way, watch this video right here. <laughs> 